Hey, hey, everybody, welcome on into the ClayShare studio. I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips, and this is ClayShare Live. It's our weekly live broadcast where we uh, teach you something, and it's fun too. So it would be edutainment. <laughs> I know, very funny. So tonight we are going to be making bisque stamps or clay stamps. If you've ever wanted to know how to make your own clay stamps, this is for you. You're going to love it. Uh, you know me, I love texture. I do a lot of uh, texture work, you know that. And uh, sometimes the textures I use are rolling pins, sometimes they're mats, sometimes they're silicone fondant molds, sometimes they're stamps I made myself. So it just depends on what I'm doing and what I feel like that day and uh, what works for the piece I'm making because every piece will have textures that just sometimes seem to work better for it. Plus it's nice for us to broaden our horizons. Of course you can buy stamps. They can be the rubber stamps that are commercially made. Those are great. You can even go online and buy clay stamps from other potters. There are people out there who that's what they do. They, they make stamps and they sell them and you can get some really lovely stamps out there. And there is zero wrong with buying stamps made by somebody else if you don't want to make your own. You know, a lot of times when we want to add, add texture to things, we might be limited with the time we have to make pottery. So if you have maybe an hour or two hours a week to make pottery and you spend your whole time just making stamps, that can be really rewarding. But what if you actually wanted to make a piece that week and you spent that time making stamps, you'd be kind of disappointed. So you could use somebody else's stamps or another form of texture. But tonight I'm going to show you how to make a couple really quick ones. Now I have a full length class on making your own clay stamps or bisque stamps. And I also did a live uh, not quite a year ago, maybe it was a little over a year ago, I can't remember. But we made bisque stamps then. So I'm going to show you a couple others. Also in a lot of classes we talk about stamps. Uh, the garlic keeper class, if you want to make a garlic bulb stamp, I don't know if you want to come into camera two. I'll give you a nice close-up of the garlic bulb stamp. So we made this stamp for the garlic keeper class. I taught you exactly how to make this one. And we used that on the garlic keeper for part of our texture. So if you ever want to make a garlic stamp, you can go watch that tutorial and make a garlic stamp. And uh, there's the folks on Insta can see it. And you know, stamps come in all different shapes. So I can just talk a bit about the different types of shapes that we have. So this is called a roulette stamp or a roller stamp. And that's where you basically make a cylinder. You can put a hole in it if you want to and put a little dowel in and roll it that way. So it's kind of like making a mini clay rolling stamp. And it's, it's I love these because you can do a repeating pattern and you just roll it on. And that's what, I don't know if that's what I used on the bottom of this one. I used a, um, a bisque roller a clay roller, that's a whole nother class. So actually I got one right here, let me grab one, just cause I feel like if I'm gonna talk about stamps, let me go down and get some others. So other types of bisque stamps we have here, this is the roller, right? So you can make this, and then this is a texture ball, which is basically a stamp or a roller, either or. And again, these are all classes we've got already on ClayShare that I did, so you can check those out if you wanna learn how to make those. I'm sorry, I gotta pull down the Instagram folks. So there, so they can see too. All right, let me show you some other cool stamps. Look at this stamp. That's a really easy one. That's actually, I had it out a little earlier. That is a version of this stamp right here. Isn't that cool? So that's what there, and this is just a little bit of lace. So I did two different stamps. Here's another stamp I made, and uh, this was just the back handle of my paintbrush. So anything can become a stamp. You can just make perfect little circles. So look around your life and see what you've got for things, buttons. Uh, there's so many things out there that are already great stamps. So we talked about the roller stamps, you know, rolling pin stamps, a ball stamp is a roller stamp. And then you've got stamps that are just like these pattern pressing stamps that we press in. So this pattern here was created with this stamp. You can see how that looks and just press it in. I actually like to make them in different sizes because then you can play with scale. So here's the smaller one, and we just stamp that around. So that creates a little more visual interest and movement. I think we made this in a live, <laughs> I can't remember. 
<laughs> it, it, at this point, I have done thousands of videos. I don't remember. I try. Do my best. So that's a, another type of stamp. Now we have stamps that we can make using cookie cutters, where you just make a simple shape like this, and then you attach a handle to it. And what I love about these is they kind of work if you have a big area of texture and it feels like there's too much going on and you need a quiet space, you can use the stamp to create quiet space in that very textured area. Now here's a stamp I made from a texture plate that I have and I pressed the plate into clay and then I cut this shape out and turned it into a stamp. So this was a stamp that I created from another texture source. Here's a couple that I did where you can take and actually make a shape like out of clay, a lump of clay with a handle, let it stiffen up to leather hard, and then you can trace a pattern onto it, and then you can carve that out and make these beautiful one-of-a-kind stamps. And they take a little bit more time. Here's another one that I did. But they give you great results. Uh, this is a great one. I love this stamp. That's a carved one. And then this was just a texture stamp. Just gives a really fun texture. So many things that we can do. So you attach buttons to corks. Yeah, corks make great handles for stamps. It, it, a great way to do it. Here's another leaf that has a lot going on in it. It's like a double leaf pattern. Let me see what else I got. I've got a lot of stamps. Here's another one that's just one of the, the blanks that makes quiet spaces. So you can see I have got um, bins of stamps. I've been, <laughs> I hoard stamps. I make a lot of stamps. Mostly because I'll do a demo showing how to make a stamp. Oh, and then here's another great thing. Once you make your stamp, you press that stamp into clay and you get the negative. So now you've made a sprig. So then you could press this out and attach it to the surface of something. So you could have a negative and positive attachment going on on the same piece. Now, something like this, we use to make the teardrop pendants. And this was made last week during bead week when we had our big jewelry making week, which this is up. You can watch the teardrop pendant class. This is when I raku fired. Look how beautiful pendants are raku fired. And I love that the back has that um, beautiful carbonation. That's why we get that beautiful black. So nice. So this is actually one of, I made this as a gift for one of my daughters and I kept it. I may give it to her. <laughs> Don't tell on me. <laughs> uh, some other stamps I do is um, I was in the military and I use a lot of military iconography in some of my work and this is an A10. So I actually made a stamp. I drew the shape of an A10 and made a stamp out of it. And this is, um, these are made from military uh, map marking stencils that, you know, have uh, MASH and EVAC and all kinds of stuff on there. So you can really create this great dialogue in your work when you make your own stamps. All right, let's make some stamps. So you took some of your scrap clay back to your hotel in Syracuse and tried to get the wallpaper design in the hallway. You're so scared that you were on the security camera that they were gonna see and bust you. So um, found textures are anything we find in the world out there. And there's a lot of them, you know, and sometimes they happen to be on the walls of hotels. Sometimes they're on the uh, floor mats, welcome mats, other, other places. And I see nothing wrong with, as long as it's a clay that won't stain the surface, using that, make an impression and take it back and use it in your work. That's perfectly acceptable, just as long as you don't stain their, um, their walls or whatever you're doing. Uh, another fun one, the spiral. Actually, we made this, I taught everybody how to make these during bead week, I believe. We made the stamps. I'll have to go back and check. But there's, oh my gosh, if you like little swirly fiddlehead fern things. So many things you can make stamps about. All right, so let's start with some really simple ones. I've got some clay. This is why we save our scrap clay because it's great for this sort of thing. You wanna make a flowery vine stamp for the edge of a platter. So I have a viney one and I have some flowery ones. All, I'll, ta I'll walk you through it. I won't teach you how to make this exact one, but we'll see if we can get to one and I'll get you started and then you take your design. It's really simple. 
so you take your scrap clay and when you're making stamps you either make stamps where you put all your texture in it while the clay is soft like this, see how soft this is, or you let the clay stiffen up to leather hard and then you carve it. So it's entirely up to you. So for something like this, this was a wet made stamp. This here is a wet made stamp. This is a carved in a leather hard stamp. So if you have a very intricate design that you're gonna want to uh, trace the pattern onto there and then carve it, you're gonna do a leather hard stamp. This one was done in a leather hard stamp. So you make your blank first and you let it set up. And that's what I have happening over here. Here's two blanks. They're setting up. We'll work on these. And actually, let me get a barrel stamp rolled out because barrel stamps work best when they are leather hard, I think. You love making stamps. I think stamps are something we forget to make. Like we forget we can do these, right? You can make stamps. So a barrel stamp is just roll of fat coil tamp down the edges. So one of my favorite, there's a lot of artists that use stamps in their work as their texture and their way to um, create a dialogue on the surface is Kristen Kiefer. So if you know her work, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't know Kristen Kiefer's work, check her out. She, um, I think, was the first person I saw using stamps in a very innovative way. So you have to go and check out her work there. Uh, Sarah Pike is one that's, she's been doing it a little more recently, but she makes some beautiful stamp work too. So, you know, there's two artists for you. Write down in your little notebook to go, go check and see their work. All right. So we got the barrel stamp drying, setting up. We'll see if we can get to that tonight. We've got this other one and I'll make up a couple other blanks to walk you through. Well, here, I got one right here. So that was a barrel. Now, if you want to make one like this, right? You're, you were looking forward to bead week, but somehow you missed it. So yeah, uh, Evelyn, there were four or five. I can't remember how many classes I did specifically during the week. There was, uh, I think there was four during the week and we did lives and everything. But um, it usually happens the same week, that's shark week. It just came about a very funny way. I was like, bead week, and it happened to be shard week, shark week, and so we've decided that bead week is always going shark to be week. the same week as shark week. Shark so week. Um, find out when shark week is, and that'll be bead week every year. And bead week doesn't mean only beads. It means jewelry making, but bead week sounds nicer than jewelry making week, right? So do you see how I rolled out a ball? I started tamping it flat to get a nice flat surface. So this is something we could let stiffen up to leather hard and then carve into it. Or it's something we can actually press into it right now and make a soft stamp, which is you know just using tools to make impressions. You brought home shells covered in barnacles for stamps. Yeah, shells are a great thing to make stamps from. So here is a impression of a seashell that I took. And now I have this shell, which I can use it as a sprig. So here we are using it as a sprig. And a sprig is, uh, a sprig mold is the thing you make your sprig in, but the sprig is your shape. So look, now I have a little seashell, just cut the excess away and I could stick this on a pot. But you could do it with barnacles, you could do it with anything and you could attach these to, I don't know, side of your mug or something and you can have this really great seashell motif. So just press your shell in to a scrap piece of clay and fire it and you've made your first sprig mold. If you need more instruction, go search up sprig molds on ClayShare and I've got a class and you can go watch that and you can make sprig molds and create all kinds of crazy things. Um, you know, anything out there, acorns, anything that will let you press it into clay, you can make a sprig from. If it's too soft to press in the clay, you can make a silicone mold and then press your clay into that. All right, so they're, you know, seashells, great option. Yeah, I love that too. I love that you're using seashells out there. All right, so let's get going and make a, a bar stamp. So this is what I call a bar stamp. It's a shape that is more like a bar, right? And here, this started as a bar stamp, but then I carved it. So this was a flat, skinny bar, and you could roll out a slab and have a thick slab and use that to make your stamp from it. You know, it's, that'll work perfectly fine. So I've just taken a bit of clay, and ideally, if your clay is too dry, ideally you want it softer. 
if it's too dry what happens you get cracking in your clay and that doesn't give you the best surface so tamp and squeeze to make our handle tamp 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 so we can see how our surface is going and I'm going to cut the ends because I want this to have nice even thickness and it starts to taper a bit at the end and then you can let this set up and you can carve it once it's set up or you can press stuff into it now so we'll put that to the side so you make your blanks and then once you have your blanks you ha can start making you have a big collection of shells and bits of coral yeah oh my gosh so another one of my dear dear friends Judy Tavel her work has changed a lot um, but she is really well known for these pieces that have this like coral like texture oh my gosh it's amazing you have to go check out Judith Tavel you can find her on Instagram you can find her on Facebook she's she's got a whole new body of work right now uh, amazing she's doing some great stuff all right, so this is going to be a stamp that we're going to press into. So could you put a signature on a stamp? Yeah, so I have what's called a chop, and this is my signature right here, and it's carved into the clay, and I, I press this into clay. The, um, it's hard to put letters in here unless you s start with uh, something metal to, to press into it. It's not an impossibility. You certainly can carve letters. They just are a little more tricky but you can do it. I do recommend you make a chop. I mean, a chop is something simple. It symbolizes you. Most people will use their initials. They usually aren't too big. Like this could be a great chop shape. Actually, this would be a really nice one because a triangle, a little softly rounded triangle shape that I'm just working. And I have to let it set up a bit. But I could put initials in here and you have to think about your initials you know sit down with pen and paper or if you have a friend that does graphic design and say hey I want something cool that's my initials that can work together um, that I can press in the clay remember you have to carve it backwards they have to be backwards because when you press it in it's going to reverse it so if you carve it correctly you're going to get it wrong so you'll be making two stamps a lot of people do carve it incorrectly the first time it happens it's not a big deal you just make another. Uh, so this would be a great one for initials, but you got to think. So if I did mine, JP, well, if I went JP, that's going to be backwards. I have to go JP like that. So that's something you got to think about when you make your stamp, like I did on this. See, it's backwards, but it'll be forwards when it's pressed. Judith Tavel. You can also look up JT Ceramics, but I think she goes by Judith Tavel now. Or J U D I, Judy. I mean, that's what I call her. But okay. You got her side. Thank you. All right. So I was talking about things we can press in the clay to use as a tool for mark making. And tools that make marks make great stamps. And there are so many things out there you can use. I'm just going to grab a few of my favorite things. Other things that are nice are color shapers because you can actually draw into the clay with these. And I have a few different because each one will have a different um, softness level. Like these here, these, I don't think it was Kemper, but they're similar to Kemper. I think I got these from China Clay Art. They're very rigid. The, the, the plastic or whatever they use, the silicone is not very forgiving. So this is good for clay that might be a little stiffer. For clay that's fresh and wet and soft, we have these very soft ones that I mean, we can actually draw into the clay. You can draw patterns onto this, but you don't let them set up if it's the really soft. So what's a maker's mark versus a chop? So a chop is what they traditionally call it in Japan, and it's what printmakers use, and it transitioned to potters. So potters often call their maker's mark uh, a chop. Maker's mark is more of a Western term. Chop is more of an Eastern term. Um, because I learned in the... Uh, under a potter that studied from a Japanese master. I have a lot of techniques I learned from them. So I have a lot of Eastern influence in the style of work and what I refer to. But maker's mark, you can call it that if you want to. It doesn't matter, it's the same thing. It's different terminology. All right, 
So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you using a little bit stiffer because my clay, although I just rolled it, it's scrap clay. It's, it's a little stiffer. And so something like this, and you can practice on scrap slabs to see what you get for marks. But if we just press this in at the outside, we get a little notch. Yes, I can. Will you zoom in a little bit? I will. Oh, gosh. See, look at this. Don't make me figure out what's left and right on camera. I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm creating a pinwheel pattern on the edge with this, just using the side of this tool. So this is the border. This is going to be more of a complex stamp because we're going to have multiple levels going in. See how we have a pinwheel? Now one thing I want to remind everybody when you're making stamps, please don't expect it to be perfect looking like a machine made it. It's never going to be that way, nor would you actually want that. It's made by a person. So you want it to have a bit of handmade to it. Um, if not, why are you making pottery? All right, so then I'm going to use the tip and I'm just going to go around. This is our second layer in. So this is going to end up like a flower. See what we have going on so far? That's going to make great texture. It's simple. One tool is doing all that. And then for the very center, you know, it's up to you. Do you want to have something that is a deeper hole? So you can just take this center and just go deeper. That's it. So you made the center of the flower. So you're going to get the reverse. So that's going to sit a bit proud and more proud than the rest. And it's a more of an oval flower. Do you see? But I can pinch it a bit back into a round. And if you decide you need more, so if you look at right here, if I need a little more refinement, I can go back in and take care of that. But this is done. It has a nice handle on it. It's ready to go. I'm just going to let it dry. In a couple days, this can go in the bisque kiln. So let me give you a super duper. Look how great that's going to be. It's very simple. So let's do something where we draw. Now I have one. So I went through all my stamps and I made a big old mess and I'm not sure I put everything. I had them all out. So this is a fun one. It's just simple vertical lines, but they could also be like trees, right? So if you wanted to make a tree pattern in it, you could certainly do that. So I'm going to use this again and I'm just going to draw like a tree, right? Down. And then maybe your tree's got some branches. So this is clay we rolled out together. This isn't the one that's been sitting up a little longer. So I do my verticals. Some of them are a little repetitive. They're a little too close. So I'm going to put another one every once in a while to kind of break them up a bit. And then we'll put a few more branches. So you don't really get to see the beauty of these until they come out of the kiln and you get to press it. Because right now it's like, well, that's kind of messy, but it's going to look like these beautiful little stand of trees and you're going to repeat this and you're going to use this for patterns. And that's another thing you can be thinking about is like the patterns you can make and how they can repeat and work together. Not at Encica. I know. I did not go to Encica this year. Nope. I'm home. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of reasons that factored into that. It didn't happen for me this year. California and Vermont are very, very far apart and flying is very expensive right now. So that just didn't happen. Not this year. So we got some other tools. Let's play with other texture possibilities. And I've got something as simple as this is actually a slip and score tool, but a needle tool will have a similar back and we can make little shapes with this by just pressing it in. 
and I really like to start at the edges to make a border and then work my way to the center. But you can start at the center and work your way to a border, doesn't matter. So that's kind of fun going there. And then in here, we'll do, do another layer. It's kind of an abstract, crazy one, but the thing is, it will make great texture. So that's a round one. Let's make something square. Next year, Cincinnati, yes. Uh, I do hope to go to Cincinnati next year. We will see how it all works out. This year we're building a new studio, as many of you know. So uh, really, I can't, I can't travel. <laughs> I need all the pennies for the studio. So, all right, we're gonna square this. So it's a circle, so I'm just gonna tap it to make it a square. Slightly rounded square. And if you want more of a true square, just keep working it and you'll get the true square. <laughs> Hello from Norway. I love stamps too. Woo! -hoo! Stamps are awesome. There's so many things we can do with stamps and you just can be really simple with it. I want to do a cookie cutter one too, one of these for you. So don't let me forget. I'll have to grab some cookie cutters to do that. So let's do something. Um, we got a little square here. So maybe we want to do something that plays with the line that we have. Let me grab a needle tool. So I'm gonna create top and bottom. And then we'll make a fringe. And if you're worried about pressing down and causing any warping on your stamp, just put your hand under it to support it as you do this. So we got some fringe. do this side here. So in prime time next, for premium members, we're going to be using stamps and we're going to talk about different ways we can make patterns, repeating patterns with stamps we have made, just very simple stamps. So this alone could be a really cool stamp. I mean you have a blank space in the middle and a lot of times people think that's a bad thing, but it's not. You know that gives a place for the glaze to be a little different than it would be here. But we're going to go ahead and do more line work. So I'm just taking the side of the needle tool, pressing it into the clay. So look at this stamp. Once this dries, this is going to be so much fun to put in the clay. There's a lot happening with this stamp. Now, if you want to take a stamp, this one's been sitting up, and you want to shape it a little bit. So we have a circle, but maybe I want to cut a bit away. So I'm going to make kind of a fan shape or a palm or actually a ginkgo leaf shape. See how I'm, I traced out a line? And then you can just cut it away and pop that off. So you need to wait for them to set up if you're going to do carving and cutting into. They just are too mushy if you don't wait. And that's definitely enough material removed. So we could leave this and just have a fan, right? You could just do a fan shape if you want to. But we're going to carve into it a little bit. And you can get really into your carving. And if you have Diamond Core Tools or other companies' carving tools, they come in really handy for making your own stamps. Mississippi Potters is trying to start a clay conference this year. Ah, oh, that's very cool. So look at Mississippi Pottery Makers. And so it'll be in February. Ah, uh, Jane, you couldn't go to Enseca as well. Yeah, I know. A lot of folks I, I hear from, that's the same story. It just was hard this year. So once these are made, I saw a few people asking, what do you do? You just bisque fire them, and then they're ready to use. You don't have to do anything else. They're, they're done. Although you might carve something and you might 
think, wow, that's amazing. I, I want to turn that into a piece of jewelry. I would not do that with it. I would take the stamp once it's bisque fired, press it into clay, and then make a mold of it, right? And then you can go ahead and do that. So then we have this, and we could carve a pattern. This is going to be kind of an art deco if you look up art deco designs. You're going to see stuff like this. So I'm going to take, I don't know, I'm going to get this so you guys can see. And I'm just going to carve into the clay right here. I'm going to make a bit of a thick line too because I want this to really come out when I press it. So this is the Diamond Core Tools P12 carving tool. Uh, it's, it's really one of my favorites. I have three tools from them that I love for carving. The L3, which is like my number one go-to, and then it's the P1 V-tip or this, the P12, that I'm really, people ask me all the time what ones I like, and those are the three. So you let it stiffen up to leather hard. These little marks, I know it looks like these marks are teeny, teeny, teeny. They'll show. I promise you, they will show. And so down in here, we can do some little like V's maybe. Sometimes after I carve them and they set all the way up to bone dry, I'll go back with a brush and brush them out because there'll be little crumbs of clay. And if I find I really need to go back in there, uh, once it's set up just a little bit, I will grab one of my, like my L3 right here, but this is too soft for the L3 right now. And those lines I just made, I will go back over and really make them deeper because sometimes you need to do that. And then this one right here, uh, very simple. We'll just do some lines coming off vertical lines. So the great thing about stamp making is the kind of thing that even if you don't have a studio at home, you can make stamps at home. Just bring some clay up, bring some clay home with you. You know, work in the evening, make a few. That way you're not losing that precious studio time if you have to go to a studio and use a community clay center or a community studio. That way you're not wasting that time. I don't mean to say that. Look, I'm not saying stamp making is a waste of time because I'm spending my time doing it and I don't ever do anything that wastes time. But stamp making is something that you can do easily at home. You don't need, a, you don't need anything but a few tools. So we got this one. So that's, that's going to be fun. We'll let that sit up a little bit. And let's see where else are we at. We got the chop. So if we wanted to make one with somebody's initials, so it's like, let me get a pencil or something before I start drawing on here. I definitely want to think about it. Oh, a great pen from Pearson Pottery. Thank you, Kathy Ray Pearson, for sending me a Pearson Pottery pen. I'll draw on my board. Um, so you can think about, I'm going to make a stamp for me. Yeah, I know. Or maybe I'll make it for Kevin. So here's a K and a P. That's his initials. So... If you take your initials, so that's Kevin's my other, Riley Phillips, my daughter, Leanne Phillips, my other daughter. So we've got these shapes. I don't know if you guys can, you can't see that. Let me scoot this over. You see those little teeny tiny letters? So you think about the letters and how you can make them look um, cool and in what shape would work really well. And then you got to reverse it, right? So you have to do like, if I was going to do Leanne, I could do an L and then a P. So let's see, would an L and a P look good on a triangle? Sure. Sure. I think so. Why not? Anything looks good on anything. So what do you think? Oh, I, I'm just, uh... <laughs> you want me to do your initials? Actually, you're going to make stuff in clay. Yeah. You want one? Sure. Oh, man, look at this. I, I was just humming because I've already banned three people from the page on Facebook tonight. The, the spammers are out. So anyone thinking about spamming the broadcast, might as just well just don't. head on somewhere else. Uh, because uh, 
Why would no people be spam? No one watching this is going to click your spam, and I'm just going to delete it. Oh, just delete it, bam. honey. Don't worry about it. So just All right, so let's do a on. K. Um, oh, my gosh. All right, so we're going to draw a line for the K. I'm just using my needle tool. So ideally, you should make your own chop or maker's mark Kevin Phillips. You shouldn't have your wife make it for you. But she's very kind, so she'll make it. There's a K. Right? It's backwards. And then the P. I made the K too good. I think a square would work, work better for Kevin's chop. I feel like a square is the shape for it. So I think I'm going to remake it. And this is very common when you make a chop. You're going to make more than one. I hope you make more than one. It takes a while to find one that you like. And I think the clay is too dry for me to square it. Let's see if I can get another one quick. And we'll see if I can get to it before the end. But that's, I mean, you make a shape. You got any shape. You got circles, ovals, diamonds, triangles, squares, rectangles, um, whatever. So much spam tonight, huh? The K and P back to back, and then it would be a little, it would be backwards, like a KP. Let me see. It has to go K, P. So mine is kind of connected like that. I didn't want to make his like mine. I was trying to be a little more original. I actually changed mine up recently. All right, so we're going to make a square and let that square set up. And while it's doing that, let me grab a couple cookie cutters because I want to show you how to do the ones for quiet space. And they can be any shape that you have. A cookie cutter of, uh, I really like circles and flowers and diamonds and all those things. And I had some really great fondant cutters. Some of you know what I'm talking about, those little teeny tiny ones. There they are. There they are. So these are really great things to make stamps from right here. And uh, they are made by, whoops. Sorry about that. <laughs> Attico. <laughs> Attico. This is one set. This isn't actually the set I'm using. I, I mixed them all up into one thing, but that's the company that I have stamps from. So tiny. They are tiny. Um, yeah, when you make a stamp, you do, you tend to make them really little. So that it, you know, when you stamp into your pot, it's not so overwhelming or it's not the biggest thing out there. You want something that's kind of elegant and a little refined and, and small so it's not like half the pot is your signature. So we've got all kinds of things in here. We can have a good time. So this one I made with a flower shape. Probably not this one, but something similar. So you just press out your stamp. Just like that. But this is hard to press into things. Like once it's fired, it's really hard. You have nothing to hang on to with. So flip it over. Take a little bit of clay. Roll it into a handle. I'm going to tamp it down a bit. And then you slip and score it onto the slab. Because it's scrap clay, it's dry. If it was fresh clay out of the bag, it might be wet enough that I might not have to slip and score, but I do have to slip and score this one. And the great thing about it being a little stiff is when I cut out the shape, it really holds, um, it holds its shape. You know, it stays nice and flat. It doesn't flop. And so we just press this in, just like that. And there we have it. So these are nice. They, they just create really nice quiet areas. And I have some little teeny tiny ones. These are great too. Let's make some little, this is a little clover. Uh, it should be a four-leaf clover with tomorrow being St. Patrick's Day. But I have a three-leaf clover. 
When you make these little tiny guys like this, it can be hard to get them out, so you can use a tool. I actually have, I don't know if I have any right here, I actually made up a whole bunch of plungers specifically for these because I found that when I pressed them out, just like I did now, I kind of, you kind of, beat, you beat them up. Let's see, do I have any of those right here? Let me check. I did a whole bunch of plungers. I don't think I have them. I think I've shown them in another broadcast, but the idea is you have a plunger that is the shape on a little coil and you can press this down inside and it pops it out. So you make your own plunger. So what I do is I'll actually press this in to the cookie cutter and I'll let it dry in here. Let it dry until it is about leather hard, not all the way, and so that I can easily get it out without deforming it. Then I attach my handle to it. I let this go through the kiln. Make sure your handle is taller than the cutter. So you make your handle kind of tall and skinny. And then you use it as your plunger and you can plunge it out. So all these little tiny intricate pieces like this, you can get the shapes out quite easily now. So I made a whole set of plungers to match all of these little teeny cutters because I can get my finger barely in here. But even when I do that on the little ones, it almost, this one I saved. But you can see where that would get a little tedious, right? So you make yourself some plungers. This could be the plunger for that here. I'll, I'll show you how to make it. So here's the shape, right? I managed to get this out, but say I hadn't, and it had to sit in there until it was leather hard, which would be perfectly fine. And this is gonna be the, the plunger part. And it is long enough. I'm gonna make it a tiny bit longer. Just a tiny bit. Didn't know you were going to make stamp plungers tonight. And you could make this on any size stamp. If you struggle, like a flower stamp this big, and you have a hard time pressing it out without deforming it, go ahead and make yourself some plungers. This is a little tip that I've been using for so long, and I've never, I've used it since I've been using cutters. I've never shared I am so sorry, I'm apologizing. I've never shared this with you guys before, I don't think. I can't find my pottery sponge, so we're just gonna use this little white melamy sponge. So look, this is the plunger that will fit. Once it shrinks, it's gonna have no problem going down inside this shape right here. And usually I will try to keep them in a container next to my shapes. I'm gonna see if I had any in here, and I don't. I don't know where they are. I've got, like I said, I have so many stamps. So we did plunger stamps tonight, right? You can put plastic over the cutter. I have had awful, awful, uh, I've just not had good experiences with plastic in the cutter because it, the plastic tends to round it over and pillow it a bit. And I don't really want that happening um, on the shape sometimes. But I think if plastic works, go for it, yeah. Um, this one's a good one too. So you make these cutters, you make these stamps so that you have them for creating more texture. And you could actually, if we wanted to, if I wanted to add texture to this shape here, we could take like the back end of this color shaper So now I've made one from a slab. Look at the pattern we just put on there. That'll be very pretty pressed in the clay. Yeah, it's not nice, very simple. And you could uh, also use this technique to make a pendant. That, I mean, could just be a pendant, right? Could you just add a plunger to the slab then cut with the cutter with the plunger inside? I don't, I don't see why not. That's brilliant, yes. Libby, you get a gold star tonight because you came up with a brilliant idea. Yeah, I think you told, I never thought of that, but um, sure. And then let it all dry together. So this is now gonna be a really cool stamp once it dries. Stamps dry pretty fast depending on the humidity in your studio. Right now, 
Well, not today. Surprisingly, we're not running the heat. Can you believe it? Because 55 degrees outside, we don't need to run the heat at 55. That's like t-shirt weather in Vermont. So, uh, but yes, well, when it's colder, when we're running the heater, they dry out very fast. But there we have our little handle. So we'll put that off to the side. We got a nice little, here I'm gonna set them on this little work board. I got a nice little grouping going and I don't wanna bump them and put them off to the side. So I really like the ones that, here's a little square. So we were gonna do something with the square. <laughs> Yay, a gold star. Tiny plungers, tiny plungers. I've gotta find them. Hey, Kev, you wanna come look for the tiny plungers? <laughs> I don't know where they are. They could be anywhere. Oh, we were talking about my A10 stamp. There it is. Copyrighted. Not really. Um, <laughs> I did A10s. I did tanks. See, I got a little tank stamp. Um, those, are, uh, those are some really great ones. What else do I have? So this one was a sprig I made, and then you can make a stamp from the sprig. Right? So you can go both ways. If you got a sprig, you make a stamp from your sprig. If you got a stamp, you make a sprig from your stamp. Either one works. Or stamps. No, no. Exactly. So uh, these, these are actually Riley's. These are not mine. These are my daughter's. So I'm not going to show those. <laughs> she, was, she made some of those a little while ago, and I'm not. That's not part of this. So this little square for Kevin's initials. Let's see if it's ready for us to, to put his initials in. Let's see. So it's K. And then a P. Like this. And I'm probably going to, I just had fun with this one. This would not be probably the one he wants, but I don't know. It's the one he wants. It's the one he wants, he says. So do you see it's backwards? It's KP. It's okay. Don't worry about it. I'll find them and show them some. I'll, I'll show them in prime time. Premium members, you'll get to see the the plungers. So, and again, this is pretty soft that I'm pressing in and making a shape like this, but once it has stiffened up, I can go back in and carve it out. If all you have is a needle tool, that'll work too, but this is a good size, it's a good size stamp for marking clay, and remember it will shrink, so Don't worry about it being too, too big, but that's gonna look good. Got a KP. All right, so we'll put that off to the side too. What else we got going on here? That was the first KP. These are the trees we were doing. Oh, we want to do a viney thing. Um, I'm gonna do something, oh, is this ready? How much time we got left? I'm like dry, faster, we're almost done. Eight minutes. Eight minutes. Okay, I wanna do something. So this is a barrel stamp and they roll. And it's, a, it's great because you can do a pattern that is never ending, right? It would be a repeat. So you have a start and a finish. And uh, some of my favorite ones are barrels that I've made over the years. And honestly, I don't know what I, I have this one lidded jar full of them and I don't know where I put the lidded jar. I did something. All right, so it's a little wet. I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to carve it the way I wanna carve it, but we're going to try. We're gonna try, all right? So we're gonna draw a leaf. I'm gonna carve a leaf form, but it's kind of like a mitten leaf, right? So it looks sort of like a mitten, but we're gonna do the opposite on this side. And really, right now, all I'm doing is the sort of tracing. So I could use a needle tool to do this as well if I wanted to, and so that I can get a good layout going. So that's the start. 
so they will have this where they come together and I will have to go in and carve this deep once this is set up it's way too wet but I'm at least going to lay it out right now and then there'll be details like you know veins in the leaves right and so then I like to do a swirly thing and you know what let me just use my needle tool and so we'll go down another leaf in there do a curve here I don't know if this is picking up and then the great thing about the carving is because we're going to carve away I can make it too fat I can make my vines too fat to begin with because I can make them skinnier as I carve them so I would I would encourage you to make them too fat <laughs> to start with because you'll be able to go ahead and refine them down the line. Because we're going to remove all this excess. So let me just show you the mess we got. No, it's great. It's got to sit though. Stamps are never, sometimes they're really fast, but really intricate ones you have to spend the time. So let me show you. We start where these two come together. And then there's our line, and they, they, it kind of goes down. I'll finish this and show it when it's finished. But all the negative space, I'm going to carve away so you won't see it. So it'll be like this one here. Do you see how this is carved away in here? It'll be like that, and it'll come out much more elegant. So I, I hope that was enough instruction to get you started on this right here. And then the last one I've got, I've got another one of these little guys here. left to do and so you can always do something really simple stripes and dots whatever you want to do yeah I would the so the stylus tool could work for giving me my outline but it won't carve well enough it will give you a nice outline so what you'll get is a different type of stamp you'll get a stamp that is more like this stamp here right so it'll give you a different style stamp. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, it's just going to be a, a totally different one than what you would get if you carve it out. So we have these verticals right here. And, you know, we could do something where if you wanted to make a tree, you could sketch a tree onto this. And this is like going to be a tree in the winter because currently in Vermont it's winter. So I've got a sketch of a tree. It definitely needs a lot of refinement, but what I will do with this is I will end up going in. And by all means, on the surface of this, if you take a Sharpie, you can draw or you can put um, carbon paper so then you come in it's still a little wet and you carve out so I can cut, cut away my branches I do recommend for something like a tree, don't just free trace it <laughs> like I did. Um, get a drawing or something that you really like the way it looks so that you have a reference point. Sometimes you'll have an idea and it can be hard to realize because you don't have reference materials. So you can see how we just keep going, keep removing. Take that out there. Oh, it's going to be a fun tree. It's kind of going to be a spooky tree, actually. And all of the rough areas, I can go in with a damp sponge and fix those. So I'm not even worrying about that, at least not at this point. Let 
let's see if I want to go this way. So the only thing that's going to press into the clay is going to be the silhouette of a kind of spooky tree. Definitely need to go in and smooth out all the carving marks, my marks that I had for my reference. That's why I think a Sharpie would have been better. But I can clean this up and I can use a sponge to go in. I can actually take a wooden tool and refine right in here where the branches meet with the tree. Turned into kind of a spooky little tree. Almost like a palm tree though, in a way. <laughs> so you see we got a little tree. So you can take silhouette stamps and we could go back and, you know, if you wanted to draw texture on here, you could draw some texture with your needle tool. So the texture I smoothed away just a second ago, you want to put that back, you can put that back. Or make it more defined, more intentional. All right, so cool tree, right? It does kind of look like a hand. It, you know, it makes you think of Dr. Seuss trees, actually. But if you want to make a hand, you can make a hand. And just keep going, but now we're, we're definitely going in the land of almost palm tree, aren't we? Now that I made it skinnier. Won't know what it looks like really until we put it in clay. So there we have it. So many stamps. Uh, here they all are that we made. And, you know, that's just some ideas to get you started. There are... <laughs> unlimited options. I'm just going to dry these. I usually end up drying my stamps face down. Especially for the slab stamps. But you don't have to. It's fine. And then, um, so will I be able to carve into the clay when the clay is stiffer? Absolutely. Once it gets to be stiffer, you'll be able to carve it just like any pottery that you're carving. It's just right now it's a little too soft. I thought it would dry out when I made my blanks to begin with but I forgot we're not running our heater. First day since October, no heat. And uh, you know, usually when the heat runs, things dry like crazy in the studio, but today, no heat, because we don't need it. Woohoo! All right, so I'm going to be sharing these when they're done, and I'll put them in clay and you guys can see them. And then in prime time next, we are gonna be using stamps that we've already made to create patterns and show different ways that we can be creative. And I think I'm making a planter as the actual project. So premium members of ClayShare, come back at 615. If you're not a premium member yet, why not? We have a free trial. You can go check that out. You can go to ClayShare.com and find out more about us and what we do at ClayShare. You can also go to wherever you get your apps and download the ClayShare app and do the free trial there as well. And come hang out and make more pots. All right, everyone, take care. Have a great week. Premium members, I'll see you in a few.